Jacob or uh, a... Do we have a James? Or do we have a James at the, mic, at the sound system? We have Cheryl Ann. We have Cheryl Ann. All right. Very good. Thank you, Cheryl. Very good. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. There we go. Welcome to the Lord's house on this beautiful first Sunday in the month of February, the year of our Lord, 2018. And let me start off by way of announcement by saying that we do not uh, have, we're not taking sides in uh, the big game today. <laughs> I want to explain that by, because in, in the scripture that uh, is part of the sermon today, there is a mention of eagles, but that does not mean... <laughs> That does not mean we have taken sides. It's about something else, all right? So uh, you cheer for the team of your choice. Uh, some years ago, I saw a cartoon where a priest stood before his congregation and said, it behooves you today to come and pray for the team of your choice. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that. Uh, the Lord will take care of all that. May the best team win. Uh, let me share with you another announcement. And this one is uh, this one is really fun too. Uh, this is a note from Gelia Garner. The men's group came yesterday. Is Warren all worn out from working yesterday? He's all worn out. Well, Gelia's note says, with much appreciation and thanks to the men's group who furnished trucks, trailers, and equipment to us. Uh, to to cut up and clean up Big Bush, and uh, to the ladies and youth who joined in the effort. I feel truly blessed to have such a wonderful and caring church family. Love, Gail, you garner. Now, I, I also want to show you her penmanship. This is some of the best penmanship I've ever <laughs> we, uh, we really had fun uh, yesterday, a uh, being in Christian service. Uh, we are in the midst of what I call a Super Bowl of Christian service. This is the second big work project that we have had uh, in our community in the last few weeks. And we have here goods and food for Morgan's Mercy Mansion uh, that will be taken over uh, today or tomorrow so those ladies can, can benefit from them. And we also have coming up on February 24th, I believe it is, Jenna, our uh, Lord's Acre sale. Where's Jenna? There you are. February 24th, we're going to start at 5.30. Is that Saturday? Good. <coughs> yeah, you belongs to you. That's one of your children. Miss <laughs> Frankie. Miss Frankie's got a host of children. And uh, she's still raising them, aren't you? <laughs> Wonderful. Um, we uh, are are undertaking this project in order to be a blessing. Uh, the Lord's Acre event helps us to raise money for scholarships for our young people. We have the money in place for this year. We're set to give uh, two scholarships, one to Kennedy and uh, one to Alley. But we're raising money for next year when we anticipate we will have three young people who will be graduating. Year after next, Chauncey. It's year after, not next year, but year after next. So we're, we're trying to raise the money in order to provide for them. So we invite you to look at the items that are over in the Family Life Center and also bring items. There are things that you may have at home that you really don't have a use for that someone would like to purchase. I was over this morning and uh, someone brought over a pair of knee pads and uh, I said, for a person like me who prays a lot, I could use those, you know. I, uh, so I bid on those knee pads, and you might, you might find something that you would like as well. And there, as I said, there might be something uh, in your home that you would like to bring. Uh, there, is, uh, there is this angel here in the corner. That's uh, Sandy and I call that Angel Large. And uh, she has... Uh, Grace our yard many a Christmas, but we're ready to share her with you. If you'd like to make a bid on Angel Large and place her in your yard, you are welcome to do that. Somebody could, could use that. But uh, we're raising money, and we invite you to join in the fun and look forward to your presence at uh, the uh, Lord's Acre uh, silent auction and bake sale. Right, Jenna? Yes. 
uh, but on February 24th, which is a Saturday, we'll be starting at 5.30 uh, in the Family Life Center. Yes, Sandy? Um, I've agreed to coordinate the meal, and so uh, a couple of us are bringing chicken spaghetti, and I think Sherry said she would bring one, and I would. So if anybody else would bring a chicken spaghetti or a salad or maybe French bread, then that would be good. If you can do that, if you'd let me know. Thanks. Wonderful. And speaking of our work project yesterday, uh, I, sometimes I just feel it uh, important to pass out awards, and uh, Richard Brewer gets an award for the, the hardest working uh, guy uh, in, in the work group. He not only, he, he really does. I watched him working with Michael Monk. They were putting up a porch and deck uh, the, on our previous work project. And Richard was in there doing the toughest, hardest job, kneeling down and doing all kinds of things. And he was down in the dirt, putting chains around stumps so they could be pulled up. So thank you, Richard, for, for doing that hard work. You're welcome. Yes. I got a couple over at my house. We'll <laughs> Put it on the list. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, other announcements. I invite you to check your worship bulletin for the calendar for the month of February. And... Um, Melba put this together. She was rushing down to Spicewood for her brother's funeral. There are a couple of uh, uh, errors we want to point out. There is no endowment fund meeting on the 7th uh, this week. Uh, the endowment committee is not meeting. We have nominated a new chair for the endowment committee. Uh, that's Marilyn Griffin Ballum. And the church council has been voting on her to be chair when they meet on February 12th. And... Um, we look forward to, to that meeting. By the way, the church council on that day, that's a week from tomorrow, will also be deciding whether we will have uh, an Easter sunrise worship service, whether we will have uh, a, uh, a early morning breakfast here for the community, and that's an open meeting of the church, and you're invited to come and be a part of that discussion. And I'll let you uh, govern yourselves accordingly as you look at the calendar for February 8, uh, 2018. Other announcements, what else do we need to make note of today? All right, if there's not anything else that, that you can think of, uh, let us move on to our welcome. We have some guests here today, and I'm always happy to see guests um, uh, who are here with us today. And I believe we have Dave. All right, Dave, it's good to see you back with us today. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here. Wonderful. And we also have uh, our good friend from First United Methodist Church in uh, Quitman, um, Mary and James Wilson. Excuse me, my mind uh, escapes me sometimes. Um, James Wilson and Mary Wilson and Mary's mother who is with us. And tell me your mom's name again, Mary. Joyce. Joyce. Joyce is here. Uh, uh, Mary is the uh, church secretary at the First United Methodist Church Quitman, and it was quite an effort, I think, for her to escape them to come and be with us today. They, they like to see her around, and, but I'm just so happy to see these friends. Uh, they live near us. They're on Lake Ford, and uh, we don't get to see them nearly often enough, so praise the Lord. And they are about to be mugged. Uh, <laughs>
prayer time, let's begin with Thanksgiving. This is a, a fun time of the year. It's a fun day, the Super Bowl. And we received a note from uh, Giovanni Oliveria's mom. Uh, she is in Peru. And, you know, this church has supported some of the ministry work uh, Giovanni's mother has done in Peru in the past. And she sent us some popular cookies from Peru. These are called Doña Peppas. And, uh, you know, I, I, in order to uh, make sure that they were appropriate for church use, I, I checked one out. <laughs> they are a couple of cookies with a thin layer of chocolate, and they have sprinkles on them. They are special. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, just kind of pass these around and uh, let y'all enjoy them. Would you pass them? <laughs> just make them get around. And uh, if we run out, then we'll, it'll really get interesting. <laughs> um, we also want to thank God that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Linda Hallman is back with us, and Glenn is over his uh, health concerns, and uh, some others of you who've been dealing with issues are doing better. I got a text from Marilyn Griffin Ballum this morning that she's got a sinus infection, and we ask God's healing mercies uh, for her. Um, now, we, let's get a report on George Jordan. Sadie, how's he doing? He's doing pretty good. It's a long process. It's a long, he's going through that painful uh, rehab process following knee surgery, and that's just part of it. His therapist said that he would definitely like it. Praise God, praise God. Sometimes you kind of wonder when you have to bend that knee and do all that's necessary following that knee surgery. So we continue to lift George Jordan up in prayer. And you too, Sadie, I, I bet there's been some, some moments for you as well. Pray for sleep. Pray for sleep. We pray that you will get some rest here. What other prayer concerns and what joys do you have? Bill. Oh, yes, yes. Bill White uh, came this morning. Father Bill. Father Bill White. When you get to be, um, James and Mary, this is, uh, uh, share this with you. When you get to be 90 in this church, you get to be a mother or a father of the church. And uh, Father Bill uh, came by this morning. He's in his 90s, and he comes to church no matter what. Well, he was not feeling well, and he drove up, and then he said, Preacher, could I get your permission to go home? Because I, he really did ask me that. He said, can I get your permission to go home? I, I just don't feel all that good today. And uh, we gave our permission, and we'll be checking on him, and we ask God's blessing for Father Bill. They're greedy back there, anybody. We, uh, we uh, you know, he provides a role model for us, uh, for someone who loves the Lord, and even though it's a real effort for him to get to church, he's committed to making it. Praise the Lord. Well, I forgot Kim. Kim's uh, still visiting. You haven't joined this church yet, have you, Kim? <laughs> no <laughs> back to prayer, back to prayer. What other prayer can say? Yeah. I have a joy because um, Nick slept late this morning, and just as we were leaving home, he said, I'm starving, and there's nothing to eat in this house. There you God go. Is there you go. <laughs> that makes a great breakfast cookie, Nick. Other prayer concerns and yes, uh, share with us. Yes, thank you very much for reminding me. Melba uh, Miller, our church secretary, and her husband Ken are returning from Spicewood uh, following the death of uh, a funeral service for Melba's brother, and we pray for safe travel mercies for them. Yes, ask for Yeah, you. I just wanted to say thanks very much to everyone who showed up to 
Uh, work in my house to get rid of my big bush yesterday. Well, we, we, you know, it was a blessing for us to come together. You know, when a Christian servant, somebody who serves as much as you do in the community, um, you know, has a need and we come together, that's just a joy. It's a joy. It's a joy for me and for the men, the women, the youth. I was truly amazed to get a beautiful job. Well, thank you very much. I believe when Richard was down there in the dirt, like I mentioned, I believe he was praying too. <laughs> yes. uh, prayers first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, she's getting very weak. Your friend Kelly she suffering with cancer. She can't um, bouncing down. And mom. We pray for pray for them. Thank you. I've got family traveling next week. It's going to come celebrate Mother's birthday with her. So, yeah. travel mercies for. Mm -hmm. you know, some come from all the way from Chicago to see her. All the way from Chicago. We do ask travel mercies. And just by the way, while we're doing this, while we're praying for their safe arrival in celebration for Miss Frankie's birthday, let's just thank God that Miss Frankie is doing as well as she has and, you know, continues to, to get to church whenever she can. And, uh, she uh, told me today, I said, Preacher, just don't call me too late for dinner. Just <laughs> <laughs> She's got a good appetite. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Another prayer concerns another George. Yes, Peggy. Uh, this next weekend, REC is going into the prison for the three days out there, so just keep the team in mind and also those men in white. This will be this week or next week that REC is going The 9th, 10th, and 11th. The 9th, 10th, and 11th. And this is a, a special ministry that um, Tenney Chapel supports, Residents Encounter Christ, a group that's working at the Johnson Prison very near here, seeking to be a blessing in the lives of inmates there. And we thank God for that, and we pray God's blessing on that ministry. All right. If uh, there are no more prayer concerns or joys to mention aloud today, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, we'll be using the Lord's Prayer in our communion service, so we won't end the prayer with that as we normally do. But let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your eagerness to hear from us. Lord, it's good to know that you care and you want to know what is going on with us, and we that you want us to call on you for help and for guidance and for blessing. You did not create us and then just set us free to be on our own. You want to be in relationship, and for this we give you thanks. We pray for your continued guiding hand for us and for others in this world. We pray for our nation as well as for other nations. And Lord, thank you for hearing the prayers that have been lifted up in this sanctuary today. And Lord, also hearing the ones that have been, that have been whispered silently and the prayers and thoughts that have been on our minds lifted up to you. Thank you for being a loving, kind, and powerful God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for these young people, Lord, and 
down my vision, I believe it is. On uh, 451, all verses. <laughs> Focus 
some good stuff. At City National Bank every Christmas, who knows what they give out? The can't the pecans. Pecans with chocolate on them. Go get those to Sherry Brewer, please. I have no idea what you're missing. Okay. So the last thing. So far is my lunch gonna help me concentrate on what I need to be focused on? No. This last thing was Allie's favorite thing to eat. She, I already know she's going to be angry when I pull it out. <laughs> this is what she used to love to snack on. What is it? Raw noodles. I find little pieces of spaghetti, all dry spaghetti all over the floor. Anyone want these to snack on? No, it's too much money. You're braces. You're not having those. So, if I ate this, would this help me feel better and co concentrate the rest of the day? No, not cook. Just like this. So, I want you to think of fueling your body with food the same way you would think of fueling your mind. If you're trying to be a good person and uh, be nice to those around you, but you just watch junk on TV or YouTube or Netflix for days and days and days on him. Is that going to help you to feel better? Yes. James says yes. What if you're not talking to other people and all you do is just play on the computer the whole time? It makes you feel. Do you say bad? It's better you're antisocial. In a very short time, then you can recharge. Okay, did y'all hear that? That's a good point. Short time might help you recharge, but if you do it for a long time, she said it might feel like you're turning into a zombie. So is it good to take breaks and do different things that might be more positive? Get out as much as you hate to hear it and breathe some fresh air. Things like that. There you go. So here's what I want you to think about. If you want to keep your mind in a good place, you got to take breaks and you got to put good things into it. Just like you don't want to just fill up your body with junk because you're going to get distracted. If you only fill your mind up with bad things, you're going to get distracted. And one thing that you want to be able to concentrate on is what? <coughs> what would this be? Did you get this picture? <laughs> God. Yes. God. So I want you to think about focusing and concentrating on some positive things, putting good things in so you can get good things out. Okay, doke? Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to not get distracted by the junk that we bring into our lives. Help us to focus on you and putting good things in so we can give good things out. We ask all of this in thy name. Amen. 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 Alan, take that off that box. If you need more junk, there you go. Sherry, would you give a few of these uh, cons to this young lady here? If she comes up. If I must. Okay. <laughs> Hold your hand up, Sherry. Hold your hand up. Come on, Sherry. Have an open heart. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you got to share, Sherry. You can have macaroni if you like. Thank you, Sarah. We uh, we have some of the most interesting children's messages uh, in, in any church around. I think. Thank you very much. The Bible lesson is related to the children's message as uh, as it always is, because our Scripture invites us to feed our souls on uh, good news that comes from God. And uh, some of that good news is found uh, today in the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. And I invite you to listen for the word of God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught 
and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is discarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. As is our practice, I invite you to join me in a time of silent prayer that the word that I will speak uh, on this Bible lesson will truly fall upon your ears as the word of God. Let's pray. summary of what the prophet Isaiah is saying in this passage of scripture is that of all the choices we have of who to listen to and what to believe, uh, we are called to believe in God, the one who created everything. He created us and he is able to bring us down to the earth beneath. In other words, he created us and he can take our lives. And he is able to give us life again. That is what Isaiah is saying. So you and I are called upon to seek his guidance and to trust in him, to believe in him. And you and I have had lots of choices, really. It's our nature to look for answers and to just explore things. And uh, I've, I've noted uh, several examples this past week of things that we commonly look to. Did uh, you recall that uh, this past week was the 15th anniversary of the tragic uh, fall of the Space Shuttle Columbia? You know, that was a reminder, that reminded me that uh, we are explorers by nature. We want to see what's up there. And uh, 15 years ago, tragically, the Space Shuttle Columbia came down over East Texas and Louisiana um, when they they lost altitude on the, the re-entry. Um, but we still are explorers. I was reminded also, as Sandy and I got out early um, on Wednesday of last week, we were out about 6 o'clock, and you know what we were doing. We were looking up into the sky this time to see a, an event that uh, this part of the Earth hadn't seen for about 150 years. It was the super blue moon, something that doesn't happen very often. The super moon happens because in the moon's uh, orbit around the Earth, sometimes it's a little closer than at other times. And uh, it uh, was in one of those close orbits, so it appeared oh, about 10 to 15 percent bigger than it usually did. <laughs> but not only that, it was a blue moon. A blue moon occurs when you have two full moons within the space of one calendar month. And it doesn't happen that often. That's why they call it a blue moon. And it was also a, a moon in full eclipse. And those three events uh, don't happen often. As I said, the last time it happened in the Western Hemisphere was about 150 years ago. So we got out and we had to, to see that. And not only that, um, 
some of us were out uh, Friday morning not looking up but looking down. I, I don't think any of you really did this, but you know the groundhog was going to tell us how many more weeks of winter we had. And they say the official verdict is that we have got six more weeks of winter because the groundhog saw his shadow. So we have a variety of things that you and I can look to in order to find answers. But uh, today's Bible lesson invites us to look to the God who, as Isaiah said, created everything. He created the stars and set them in the heavens. He created the moon and everything that is. He created you and me, and he is capable of bringing us down to the dust and ending our lives. But he is also capable of renewing our lives and lifting us up. And that's really the focus of the Bible lesson today. The question is, will we look to the creator of everything that is, the star of creation, to give us the light by which you and I live our lives? There are lots of folks who want to give us some direction. As uh, we listen to the uh, news today, there are conservative commentators who want to tell us what to believe about the business of uh, today. There are liberal news commentators who want to give another perspective on what to believe. And as we watch the political developments of our day, there are even uh, comics who have a lot to say about what's going on today. And uh, depending on who you listen to, some will say, well, there's a conspiracy that's going on in Washington, and we have to be careful. And uh, some will say that what we have is really a, a constitutional crisis that's about to take shape. And you and I need to be wary because there are some nefarious things that are happening. And uh, depending on who you listen to, you can become agitated, and you can become troubled, you can become worried, you can get mad as you listen to the things that are happening today. But today's Bible lesson reminds us that if we will look up to the God who created everything, he is able to draw that line between truth and lies. He is able to draw a line for us between right and wrong so that we can have the guidance that we need in order to live lives that are full of the joy that God wants to give us. We don't have to get caught up in uh, all of the things that we are told. You know, we live in a time when you might be told anything. I mean, with um, all you have to do is go online and look at the various posts. You have a variety of things that you can believe. People will say anything. And the question is, what would you and I believe? We are called to believe in the Word of God who is able to guide us rightly in this life. Amen. And uh, today I want to do something during our Holy Communion time. You know, during Holy Communion, we will be invited to come with and receive the bread and uh, the wine which remind us that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has been sent down in order to give us direction, in order to help us determine right from wrong, who, to help us distinguish truth from lies. As we come to the Lord's table today, I invite you to, to look up and say, Lord, I really want your guidance. I, I have this mindset, but I want to know, Lord, what would you have me to believe? And where would you have me to go? What would you have for me to do? Now, there's already evidence that this works for us. Because we are people of faith, some of us just came together the other yesterday, Gary, at your house. And we decided it was good for us to come and help a fellow Christian do a job at her house that needed to be done. And it really felt like church yesterday. It really felt like we were in the presence of God and we were encouraging one another and we were seeking to be uh, a blessing in the lives of one another. That's what happened, wasn't it, Sadie? When we got together, we prayed uh, when George went in for his knee surgery. Uh, we sought God's guidance and we, we felt like as we were there together and George was uh, preparing to be taken in for his surgery that we were not alone that God was with us. 
And that's what we're offered today as we come to the Lord's table. And I'm going to do something that I do not usually do when we celebrate Holy Communion. I'm going to be using uh, what we call dismissal sentences. Once one group has come to the altar and knelt and received the elements, I'm going to be offering a word from God from today's Bible lesson in the 40th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. And I want to remind you of what these dismissal sentences are. They have to do with uh, a response to what is going on in our lives. Hear the word of the Lord. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. You may get tired, but he does not faint or grow weary, and he understands everything. Now that's good news for us. Furthermore, I'll offer this word of dismissal for you as you seek to find answers in this complicated life that we are living. He gives power to the faint, and he strengthens those who are powerless. That's good news. For our young people, this is a reminder. Even youths will faint and be weary. And the young will fall exhausted because this world can make you tired. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. That's good news. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. That's the good news from God. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> Let us pray for you now to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion and receive the direction that we need from our God. I invite you to take the yellow sheet from the worship bullet really to prepare for your part in the Holy Communion ritual. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us prepare to draw near with faith and make our humble confession and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Jesus Christ, our Lord, is broken for you and for me as a means whereby you and I can be made whole. 
mantle of the body of Jesus Christ broken for you. Take and eat it and be thankful. The cup represents to us the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ poured out for us so that we can be revived and renewed and we can find strength from our God. Angela, for you, the body and the blood of Christ, be refreshed and renewed.
invite you to uh, turn to your yellow uh, insert again and join in the ritual. I will read the, uh, the part for the leader, but then as a blessing, I invite you to join in. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life, and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Now join in the blessing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. There is one more hymn, our closing hymn, Angela will lead us.